Don't do it. 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 You've been warned. Don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. I'm telling you, don't do it. These are six people that you should not date at all. Don't do it. Okay, you ready to hear them? Now, let, before we start, let y'all, you know, I'll, I'll name the first one, which is just totally obvious. If this first one is not obvious to you, well, you know what? There's some people it's not obvious to. Some people just don't know. They don't know any better. No, whatever, nobody's ever taught them. They may not have a, had a mom or a dad or people around them that may have just assumed that you know that you're not supposed to do this. Let's break down number one. And then I will tell you all about Dr. D. Nice's dating philosophy. Number one is, and it's a group. It's a, like a group of things. The obvious people that you should not date, you should not look even towards getting married with. This is the obvious. Let's go. Your parents. Don't date your parents. Don't date your mom or your dad. Your siblings. Don't date your brothers or sisters that's not allowed. You cannot do that. That is foolishness. That is wickedness. That is craziness. There's woolly pop people out there loose for you to go and hitch up, want to hitch up with your mom or your dad, your brothers or sisters. Where do I do that at? No, those people are all off limits. Your half siblings off limits, your uncle, your aunt, off limits, which would be your nieces or your nephews, off limits. Now, there's a little bit of a gray area when it comes to cousins. Now, uh, there are certain states right now in America that you can marry your first cousin, it, depending if you have to make sure that you're sterile, you can't have kids, and there's all these little hoops and do some genetic testing and things, all these things that you have to jump through. If you want to marry your first cousin, don't do it. There's two, there's like a whole royal family that totally ruined their, their family tree with this disease upon disease and mental illness and just craziness because so much people out there and they want to marry each other, this intermarrying, but you know, they want to protect the bloodline, blah, 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 blah. You don't have no bloodline to protect. Stay away from your first cousin. Second cousin. They say it's okay, but I'm not going to lie. Mentally, it just feels cringe. I said it. Too much people out there loose for you to want to go and date your, your second cousin. There's a whole world of people out there. People that you, like, the other day, I went camping with 60,000 people, teenagers, prepubescent kids, a lot of them. People out there that you have never met, there is no reason on God's green, ever-loving earth that you could sit there and decide in your mind that the only person that you can love and connect with and have a relationship is going to be your cousin. All right? Just, just, just don't do it. All right. Now that we've gotten through the don't do it off the table, not even a consideration, now that we got that all off the table, we can go into the ones that, you know, that, that, that it's more, it's more, there is a little bit more controversy, not controversy, but the ones that, you know, require a little bit more thought. All right, here we go. Oh, I promise you my dating philosophy. Let's just do the second one to just calm down the burn from the first one. If some of y'all were out there considering dating your mom. <laughs> Let's give you a time to get over it while we do number two. Number two is don't, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to high school, college, middle school for sure, high school and middle school for sure. Don't date anyone with more than a one to two age gap from you. Don't 
do it. I know that disappoints you. All y'all sit in your bed dreaming about that high school senior that is the head of the football team and you're a freshman and you're just like, oh, he's so dreamy. One day he's going to come and just sweep me off your feet. Yeah, he sweep you off your feet, right? <laughs> do not be fooled. There is nothing. Um, I'm talking to the girls now. Let me stop. Let me start. Listen, there is nothing a man that is older than you, more than one or two years, there's nothing he wants other than your body. Trust me on this one. There is no reason a grown man, well, not grown, a person that's three years older than you with women that are the same maturity same, and the same maturity level as them, there's no reason that they would want a younger woman other than a sexual thing. Do not get yourself fooled. Now, when you get up into like your 20s and 30s, where the age gap uh, does not really reflect the maturity gap, most of you all are somewhere around the same in the same level of life, you're dealing with some of the same things like job, paying bills and, and things like that, that maturity gap is smaller despite the age gap being bigger. When you start getting up there, then, then it's okay. High school, middle school, those ages, one year older and there's a huge difference. Can, can you see yourself? Big, 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 big high school sophomore dating a middle schooler? Come on now. One to two years, that's all you got. If you're in high school, you should not, high school, you should not be dating anybody with more than a one to two age gap than yourself. If you want to have some sort of a, enter, a fun time together with a person. And let's not forget that there may be some legal issues if you start getting into like 18, 19. And we don't, we don't, we don't even want to get in there. You're going to have to do your own research right now. But with that, let, let's get into Dr. D. Nice's dating theory. I personally don't feel that any of y'all should be dating high school, middle school, even somewhere in college. Unless you are ready to be married, don't put yourself in that situation. It just make it's you're inevitably gonna this relationship is inevitably gonna end, and then it's like almost like you're practicing breaking up. You're going through this this fake marriage thing. Don't, and then you get yourself into situations where you're having sex. And you're putting yourself in the potential of getting diseases, getting pregnant. You don't need to be playing. You don't need to be, you're, you're a kid. You need to be worrying about your career uh, and going out and enjoying yourself, going to football games, basketball games, just hanging out and having a good time. You do not need to bring relationships on the table now to complicate your life. Enjoy your young life. This is a time of where you will never get back. And to go hitch up yourself with somebody at this time. I'm against it, 100%. I don't think anybody should be dating seriously until you're in college, maybe like sophomore, junior year of college. Take it or leave it. I put it out there for you. Number three, who you shouldn't date. Don't date nobody with no ambition. They don't have no ambition. They have no life goals. They don't know what they want to be. I know you're still teenagers, and it really doesn't matter. All y'all in the same boat. No, you're not in the same boat. There's some people that you can tell they are sitting there and they have absolutely no life goals. Maybe they go to class. Maybe they don't. Maybe they come to school and maybe they don't, but they cool. They cute. They dress well. And that's all you see. It's not going to work. You are the valedictorian of your class. You, that whole bad boy, good girl, good girl, bad boy thing, it just 
doesn't work. It's a movie. These you, you've been sold lies by Hollywood, by Disney. It's just not going to work. It isn't. You're setting yourself up for absolute misery. Make sure you date somebody that has goals, has ambition. And I understand, you know, like that bad boy person, they exude, they, they kind of represents a masculinity that women are drawn to. You can absolutely find that in somebody that's trying to get a job and trying to uh, <laughs> live a good life. You don't have to be one footstep away from jail to be a masculine, to be considered masculine. Girls, don't fall for it. Guys, don't fall for it. The pretty face, they don't have, they don't understand nothing about this world, the whole dumb blonde thing. And I'm using that to represent all women that just go around. All they're doing is focusing on just looking good. And the men that are just going around, just look, trying to be a stud. <laughs> Do people use that word anymore? I don't know. Whatever they're using out there, just don't fall for that. Date somebody, if you're going to even date at all, that has some goals and some ambitions in life. Number four. Where's my four? Oh, there you go. Number four. <sighs> And this one, I'm going to have to put on. I'm going to put a megaphone on my voice for this one. Okay. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Do not date your best friend's ex. Your brother's ex. Your sister's ex. Don't do it. Okay. Did you get that? Your best friend's ex, your brother's ex, your sister's ex, don't do it. Once again, too much man and woman out there loose for you to feel that you need to be, <laughs> you need to be going after somebody's ex that's super close to you. Awkward. You don't need that awkward moment, especially for somebody that in the end, honestly, you're not going to even end up with spending the rest of your life with. This is just you. Oh, she's cute. Playing on your emotions. You are growing up to be a person that makes decision based on principles. Bros before. And what is the, I don't know. There's a, is there a term for girls? That girls, that um, girls before, I don't know. But honestly, stay away from your best friend's exes. There's people out there that you can date. It does not need to be your best friend ex. I don't care how cute they are. I don't care how compatible you all are, how much you're kiki and laugh, laugh. <laughs> oh, you're so, <laughs> No principles stay away from them put some distance between the, you and them if you feel that you're not able to control that stay away from them don't do it you will ruin your a great friendship that will last for the rest of your life over a late relationship that's gonna last a few months i'm just telling you i'm putting it out there i'm giving you all the tea all the information people won't tell you it they're just telling you just go with how you feel it's our re no you're becoming an adult, and adults make decisions based on principles. You are a human being. We act on principle, not feelings. You're not an animal. Number five, don't date no authority figures. Your teacher, your boss, your, your lab instructor, your coach, all these people, your counselor, all these people, your pastor, authority figures above you, do not date them. This goes, kind of rolls with the age gap thing. I did feel that this one needed its own category, though. It needs to be said. I know a lot of you all out there, you know, you have daddy issues, you have mother, mommy issues, and you see this person 
you confuse your lack of having a the relationship that you want with your mom or the relationship you want with your dad. You confuse it and you're like, oh, well, this is love. Or you just, you know, you're just growing into growing into your testosterone or you growing into your estrogen and you want to flex it and see how it works on a grown person. You know, uh, what's this? Stacy's mom got it going on. This is a song from way, way, way back in the day. You want to see if your hormones and all those things are working and you want to test it out on some authority figure, there's something that you feel you could gain if you could get this authority figure to love you, to pay attention to you out of all the people around. Don't do it. Your ego does not to be, need to be stroked in such a way. It just complicates your life. You're going to have to be dipping and dodging. And then let's forget, let's not forget, this person is somebody you claim to love and they're, you're setting them up to go to prison, to go to jail, because, of course, the whole pedophile thing that we cannot ignore. Stay away from them. If you feel that you're having some attraction to your teacher, or your pastor, your counselor, your coach, quit the team. Stay away from them. Make sure you're always with somebody else. Do whatever it is you need to do to manage their emotions. Once again, remember, you don't have to act on every single emotion that you feel. You don't have to. There's principles that are first and then your emotions. Number six and our last one. This is the last one we got. Don't date anybody that has very different religious or core value differences to yourself. Yeah, you could love and be attracted to them. Yeah, because, you know, people are cute. People are nice. People do good things and all of that. They're, they're, he's a nice person. She's a nice person. Yes. But when the rubber meets, ro- meets the road and you're trying to make decisions about well, I mean, let's just put out the Seventh-day Adventist thing because you all know I'm Seventh-day Adventist. You're trying to make some decisions about, well, let's go out to eat and they want to go on a Friday night and they want to ha- you all to go out and have a lobster dinner. And these are things that you just don't even do. You're going to be like, well, you know, I love him and maybe I will. You start mentally kind of compromising Whereas if you are are more con- compatible in your core beliefs, compatible in the, 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 the principles that you use to make your day-to-day decisions, it takes away some of the complexity from a relationship. Because relationships are no joke. You're, you're like two, two different people, and you're going to try to have some sort of relationship. You want as many similarities, especially when it comes to core values, and this, we're just talking dating. Oh, forget about getting married. Now, there's a difference between if the person, like, there's some people that are just Seventh-day Adventists by name. They don't really go to church. That's just happened to be the church they grew up into. Some people that are just Muslim by name. That just happened to be the religion that they associate themselves with. They're not really practicing. That's a whole different thing. And you can deal with it as you wish. If... These are principles that either of you just find a core belief. This is who you are as a person, and you absolutely like know that. Don't play those games with yourself. Don't play those mind games. Once the dust settles from all the love and, oh, he's so cute, oh, you're so beautiful, and blah, blah, blah. Once the dust settles with that, you're going to be left with somebody that you cannot stand your parents cannot stand because you all are so different in your core beliefs. Don't play, don't play around like that. Find somebody whose core beliefs, whose values, whose religion matches with yours. You don't, I said it a million times. There's too much people out there loose. You understand me? You look, there's how many billion people in the world? I can't, wait, is it eight? Is it eight billion now? Lord, gee, Lord. I don't remember. I think it's eight. But it's a lot of people out there. You in your small little bubble, don't think that there's nobody there for you to the point that you have to go and try to date your mama, your sister, your cousin, your boyfriend, your best friend's ex, the your teacher. 
somebody that's way, way older than you, you somebody that don't believe the same thing as you do. You, there's too many people out there for that. Don't get yourself trapped into something. Somebody that don't have no ambition, they selling drugs on the corner. Don't get yourself trapped in that and thinking that there's nobody else out there for you. There is. I promise you. There is. Lock those people off. Shut them out of your mind and open your mind to a love that is available to you. A love that you don't have to worry about looking behind you. Is your best friend going to be seeing you? Looking behind you, are the cops going to be seeing you? Wondering how people are talking about you when you leave the room because you're dating your mama or your cousin? No. There's a lot of people out there. Trust me on this one. All right. Let me know in the comment section below if you, I missed any that I should have mentioned. And don't forget, you're here. You might as well subscribe and turn on the notifications. And of course, like the video while you're here. Okay? All right.